filmmaker. I consider myself to be uh, a bit more than just a director. I, you know, I shoot, I edit, I produce, I write. Um, I, I wear a lot of hats on set, and um, I sort of been in the industry now. God, uh, seventeen years. Um, ninety eight is when I started. Oh, same time. Yeah. That's when I graduated in '98 film school. So yeah, that's so I've been okay. trying ever since. What film? What film school did you? Go I to? actually, um, I studied in the US, um, and uh, yeah, basically went there. I mean, I, I, I when I was at film school, that we were editing uh, on computers at that point. So you, you know, it, that had that had already happened. But in terms of the filming stuff, it was still the the, the the infancy of 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 digital um you, you know capture so um you know i was quite pleased that i was learning on 16 and 35 mil film and the, the first film i made was shot on 16 mil and, and i kind of like that because it, it it gave me a, a sort of real discipline for the craft but obviously i love the fact that we've got the tools now that make it so much um quicker cheaper and easier to um to, you know you know to do things but uh but yeah so you, you know i've been i've been sort of at it about the same time as you um you know i've written produced and directed my my own stuff um but you, you know i've yet to well get anywhere near where where i where i want to be in terms of uh you, you know breaking that barrier and actually you know getting to the next level as it were and, and doing uh, features that that, that that might actually get seen out there someday but uh, but I haven't given up yet so you know um, again that's a whole nother podcast <laughs> well I think uh, w w this is going to be a podcast extra I, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna make this kind of separate so we we can talk a bit in depth and not have it sort of at the end of the um the other podcast because right. I think we ended it quite nicely and that's that's a good place to end but it's 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 nice to sort of we'll we'll just sort of, you know just briefly talk about you know our our experience yeah so okay um so I did a crash course in filmmaking i didn't go to film school um i did uh six weekends at a place called panico which is oh, run yeah. by uh yeah. bob and julian doyle and they both worked with the uh monty, uh, monty python crew and so they had worked on films like um life of brian meaning of life uh brazil um oh the very first film, Holy Grail. I mean, uh, Julian Doyle is the policeman at the end that knocks the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And um, yeah, so and the, the the great thing they did was that they would bring in professionals, people who were working in the industry to talk about certain aspects. I mean, it was very basic. I mean, it was very much like, you know, this is a camera. That's some actors. This is writing. Directing's telling what the actors what to do. That's sound. This is editing. You know, uh, we did like two projects. One was the shoot on Super 8, uh, a one take short. So we had to tell the story in one. Brilliant take. discipline. A brilliant thing it to is. do. Yeah. I will tell you now what I shot uh, with my friend at the time was rubbish <laughs> absolute rubbish and i remember we we did a couple of takes uh you know a couple of run-throughs before we actually filmed and we and the idea was a uh, uh, some guy grabs somebody else's oh he grabs his wallet and the guy realizes it and he runs after him and punches him and of course the camera there's a bit of a delay with me as the cameraman getting there so the guy's already on the floor with blood down his, you know, we just, we, we put like a little blood bottle around the corner and stuff like that. And uh, I do remember that we, so we did this several times. And then that on the time we filmed, this guy came out from the house in front of <laughs> us. I was like, what are you doing? And, you know, it's, I've got kids and <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, bloody hell, you could have said something when we were not filming. I think 
I caught a bit of it, but the the camera ran out. Ah, yeah. And, that old chestnut. Uh, also, the <laughs> that old chestnut. That is the thing about film; it it does have a tendency to run out. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, the, I, the other project was we did a day of filming on set, and you know, um, we we would swap around roles. So um, again, we'd be paired up, and we come up with a, like a little short scene to film, and then while other people were doing their scenes. Uh, we would crew up and I think the crewing part was actually more instructional than the actual directing part because you learnt set etiquette yes very important thing yes because a a lot of people I've worked with uh, especially leaving after after leaving Panico don't understand set etiquette don't understand that you can't go up to a director and talk to him while he's you know setting his shot up or at the beginning of the day when he's trying to figure out what shots he's got to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I, I think some, I, I'm amazed cause I, I've, I have worked with students and you know, they've done a course like a, I'll give you a good example. Recently I worked with a, a sound recorder who came straight out of college and he'd been taught all kinds of stuff yet he never they never once got him to work on a set. Didn't even like do a mock up. Oh, let's get some people together and we'll just, you know, put, you know, we'll make a film and show you how, you know, he had no idea. No idea what slate was, what roll sound. Yeah, well, meant. you know, don't even get me started. As you know, I've worked as a, uh, uh, a teacher at a, at a media college teaching film. And uh, this is one of the things that used to really wind me up. So, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. Yeah, they, they, they need to be taught this stuff and they're not. And I tried to teach it, but uh, it wasn't on the syllabus, which I always thought was a bit odd. <laughs> now, you worked over in the States for a while. I did. Now, who, who did you work for when you were out there? OK, I like that you're setting me up. That's nice. Uh, no, I mean, I was, uh, you know, I was very fortunate. Um, basically, uh, I decided, you know, I wanted to go to film school quite early on. It wasn't really the done thing at the time. Um, I tried. I'm, I'm from Bournemouth and I tried to get into the uh, film program at Bournemouth University and didn't actually uh, get in at the time. And... Um, what I did, it, it's very random, actually. Uh, I'd been over to the States uh, on holiday and had done a bit of investigating. And, you know, I'd looked at the, you know, where a lot of my my heroes had gone. So, you know, UCLA and USC and New York and all this sort of stuff. And they were ridiculously expensive and just, you know, not, not going to happen, basically. Um, because, uh, you know, I was going to have to fund myself for this, basically. And... Um, I ended up, I saw an episode of the Today Show and Steven Spielberg was on it. And, uh, you know, growing up, Spielberg was was probably my idol, you know, um, initially. Uh, one of the people that got me into to film. And um, he recommended this course um, in, in Florida. Uh, and it was run by a, a guy, a, a wonderful mentor type guy who'd come out of the uh, University of Miami. Um, and it was at the it was at Valencia. And it was uh, essentially the, the, the program was that you would that the students on it would make up the crew on medium budget independent productions. So the, the, the teaching was literally this thing that you exactly the thing that you've just picked up on was the set etiquette. You would, we'd be on a film which, which would have professional producers, professional director, professional director of photography and a professional first AD say. So, you know, a lot of the above the line uh, people were professionals, but then the rest of the crew, we'd basically interview and do the jobs. So, and, and we do several productions a year. So, you get to have a go at different things. So I was fortunate enough. I got to work on, on camera department as a um, clapper loader, uh, which was, you know, excellent because, you know, I got used to handling film and doing slates and, you know, seeing all that stuff, how all that went on. I got to work as a boom operator on another film. 
Um, and I got to work quite often as a first AD. And, uh, you know, difficult a job as that is, if you want to learn the nuts and bolts of filmmaking, it's probably one of the best positions you can hold because you are right there with the director, the director of photography and the actors and, you know, everything. You are the basically the hub of the production. You know, you're the communicator on set. Yeah, you you are, I would say, you are the governor of the film set. You are the guy who's, you know, making sure that everything's getting done, it's getting done in time, that, you know, it starts when they said it was going to start, it's going to finish when it's, you know. Uh, I've, I've, I've worked... I think I've worked with one good first AD. A lot of the first ADs I knew, um, I think they had just like they'd been given the role. They mm-hmm. were proper first ADs because they were shouters. Some are, you know, I they mean... were shouters, screamers. Uh, one guy looked like he was going to have a stroke. Yeah, you know, he's he used to have like this vein on his forehead, just always pops. Yeah, out. it's a very, it's a very. I mean, it's a very tough job, and it's a very, you know, unsung hero type job in many respects because it's extremely important it's an extremely important role for the director um but obviously it's not a creative role it's literally like being a foreman on a uh, on a on a building site in many respects and um yeah you know and and while i was there i mean the university of central florida the the guys that um uh made the same year actually the blair witch project they were there but i got to work um uh, on a on a couple of independent features that were shot on film um, as a first AD for them as well. That was sort of a weekend project that I did for uh, uh, about a year that I was out there as well. So I really got to learn the nuts and bolts of it all uh, through doing that. And um, then, you know, went across to California, as you do. And um, I was fortunate enough that one of one of ralph who who was the mentor guy that that ran the program one of his students was a chap by the name of david nutter who um you know has gone on to do uh you know david nutter is the 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 producer and director of things currently on like the flash and arrow um but he's also done you know sarah connor chronicles smallville mentalist uh band of brothers game of thrones you, you, you name it and at the time he was working on a show called Roswell High, and uh, I was lucky enough. I was lucky enough to be a runner um, on a, on a couple of the early episodes of that. Um, and I also he, he did a film called uh, which didn't do well, but he did a film called Disturbing Behaviour, which starred Katie Holmes, James Marsden, and Nick Stoll. And I got to uh, be the sort of guest set and uh, set guest and, and and hang out on that as well. So I, you know, I've I've oh, been wow. very lucky that 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 I that I got to get quite close. But as I often say, I, I've been quite close, but I've never really been able to get in there, as it were. <laughs> you know, which is which is the, the the frustrating part. But um, but in terms of experience, yeah, you know, um, I, I'm I'm very happy to have uh, to have had those. So yeah. Know, and there's there's been there's been other things throughout the years, but uh, you know, as I said, I'm not I'm not here to send the uh, the listener to sleep. So <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised. People like to hear this kind of stuff. Um, I I don't know if you listen to other podcasts, but I I listen to the movie Crip with uh, Adam. Green oh right, yes, Lynch, and very interesting. Lots of a uh, lot of war stories i you know talking about not not only what happened to them but their guests as yeah. well because they you know i i think they know quite a few people in the industry over in hollywood so they're all very happy to talk to them talk to them about and they also keep it very varied so it's not just directors it's producers agents people involved in the music industry you know um costume designers first they they've had the first AD on there. I'm, I'm still catching up. I'm cool behind, but, but people like, yeah, well, I mean, they like I, I've got yeah. plenty of war stories. I mean, obviously I, I guess we can sprinkle them out over episodes or whatever, but, yeah. but, um, essentially, I mean, the, 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 the thing for me, the pro- problem, if you want to look at it as a problem, but the thing that, you know, my visa expired and I had to come back to the UK and, um, you, you know, I have to admit since, since being back here, I found it, I found it very difficult to get any traction 
in the industry and it's it's not been through lack of trying it's it's but uh you you, you know i i think the key is i used to say this to my students and and i'll say it here so you know it's on record is is i i think um any sort of creative en- endeavors particularly in in film and whatever it's it's very important to create your own work as you well do simon and and you know we're we're fortunate enough that we live in a time where uh, we have the tools and the technology quite easily available for us to do that and for us to to create our own work. And like I said to people, even if you haven't got the the the, the money or or you know you haven't got the enough people to 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 go out and make a production as such, you know, because that does take you know more that is collaborative and it, it takes money as as you well know. Then then the thing to do is write because. At the end of the day, it costs nothing to write other than your than your time and, and energy to do it. So, um, you, you know, I think it's very important if, the, if this is the life you, you choose and you want to lead, uh, as I've done, you, you know, it, it's very easy to get down when when things don't start happening. But at the same time, you, you know, you've just got to keep going for it and creating your work and doing what you love and do it because you love it and, and not necessarily because you want to be you know, rich, famous and, 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 uh, and all of those things, you know what I mean? So, uh, um, you, you know, I, I keep cracking at it basically cause I love it. <laughs> there is something to be said about doing it yourself. Well, you, you, you've done this. <laughs> well, this yeah. I, I, I've, I've done this and sometimes it's out of necessity because it's getting harder to find crews who, you know, are looking to do stuff for experience because my budgets are, non-existent (laughs) you know it's uh, very rare that i'm able to pay people i know it sounds terrible Uh, i know somebody would be like well if you can't pay people why don't you you shouldn't do it well if that's the case i'll never make it yeah no exactly i just i'll be you know sitting here doing podcasts damn it (laughs) (laughs) but uh no not really i mean uh I actually enjoy podcasts. I've done. I've been guests on on many, but um, I find it's harder now to get crews together. And um, I I did a trailer, a spec trailer f- called Habeas Corpus, and uh, it's up on YouTube. Uh, if you type in Habeas Corpus teaser trailer, you will find it. It's very good. Yeah. Yes, directed by Clive Ashton, produced by myself, and it was supposed to be the springboard to a horror anthology film with myself, Clive, uh, Rob Wickens, Paul Davis. Yeah, and, and Brendan. All of which did a fabulous job, I want to add, as being someone who wasn't involved in the production, but has seen it. And um, yeah, very, very good all round. So well done, guys. I mean, we do all different disciplines as well, because uh, Brendan Lonergan was, you know, he's a makeup guy. And he had worked on Prometheus and Alien Free. <laughs> and you can you can actually see him in the Prometheus documentary holding up part of the uh super uh face hugger at the end. And um, you know, Rob Wickens is a colorist, um Clive Ashton's another filmmaker, and Paul Davis you will know from making um Beware the Moon, uh, which is a great documentary about the making of an American Wolf in London. I think it's about as long as the film itself. If you're into making off documentaries, it's one of the better ones. And uh, yeah, so we came together to do this and we all had different roles. Paul Davis was the star, Clive was the director, I was producing, Brendan was doing um, the special effects and I think Rob was uh, moral support. Well, he did the grading, but it's during the shoot, moral support. But to get the other members of the crew, like the DOP, the Steadicam operator, uh, the art director, it was uh, so, so tough. Um, yeah, it was, um, I just remember sort of uh, the art director we found the day before, you know, because I had several drop out on me. Wow. Because yeah, yeah cause paid work came up, or they weren't they weren't interested in doing free stuff anymore. So you know, there's nothing you could do about it. So it's 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 tough now to to sort of get together a good crew, you know, for no money. 
And okay, you know, it's just I think it's the way the industry's going now that you know people who do this stuff they really want to get paid because I know a lot of friends who they've dropped by the you know the side of the road because you know they couldn't afford to live they couldn't afford to do hey it i've been there work in the industry yeah i mean yeah. You, you know yes i got down to to uh really really dire straight so yeah i i i empathize with all of that indeed <laughs> that's and, yeah, uh, actually, a bit of a downer do. thinking what about gonna... it, but you know, it's all good. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll 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 talk more about our experiences and war stories and stuff like that. And uh, these will be like a little extra podcast that will come out with um, our main podcast. And um, so, Keith, where can people see your work? Oh, right. Um, good question. Uh, okay. Um, there is some of it on a website called uh, Snake Gully Productions. That's so www.snakegully, all is one word, S N A K E G U L L Y productions.com. Um, there, there, there's, there's some work on there. Uh, but one, of, in fact, this is good. One of the things I need to do is actually try and sort out a YouTube channel or something like that. So maybe listen out on future podcasts, and uh, hopefully, I'll have my act together and uh, and get that sort of thing ready for people. So, well, I do have. A you YouTube do, channel. yes, exactly. Uh, I set you up beautifully <laughs> there, didn't I? <laughs> uh, if you search for independent runnings, and that's plural, uh, you will find my channel which has all my work on there, apart from Modern Love, which is the feature film I'm currently making, um, which, uh, if you don't know, is a, um, a romphology, as somebody called it. Oh, I like it. It's a yeah, um, very good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very good, yeah. Uh, thank you, Paul Davis, for that one. Uh, I did say I'd nick it, and I have indeed. Um, so, yeah, it's an anthology of... Um, stories about love romance and dating sort of set in contemporary times in in the middle of london so um filmed seven of the stories and we'll be shooting two more sort of um soon hopefully this month or next month uh i was able to sort of uh, raise some more money for the film and so ready to sort of now use that to, to to make more of the stories so fingers crossed you know the whole project should be finished by the end of the year i keep saying that no no i mean well done <laughs> you've been, done it's been you've quite done quite extremely quite well years. i think to um to you know you know to 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 do what you've been doing with this so um you know hats off to you as well as paul anderson so good good work <laughs> thank you thank you and uh I have a website, uh, which is independentrunnings.com. And uh, you can find out about uh, not just my productions, but productions that I have worked for, on for other people, because uh, I also work as an editor and a cameraman. And uh, so sort of all the projects I've been involved with over the years um, that I've had like a major input into. There's not stuff in there where I was a runner, because... Um, and loads of running jobs which is a story i will say for the next podcast but um thank you keith for uh for no thank this. you for and, for uh, um for inviting me i'm you know i'm always uh, you know grateful to uh to get invited to guest and, and, and or co-host or whatever podcast so um it's good i just i'm a geek and i love love talking about all this stuff so it's all good <laughs> so excellent <laughs> And uh, thank you to you, the listener, for listening. And so look out for the next episode of Movie Heaven, Movie Hell coming soon.